And welcome back, folks, to another exciting episode of Alan Wake. And we're still in this little museum for mammoths, I guess. Bucktoothed Charlie. Colombian mammoth. This specimen, estimated to be 14,000 years old, was recovered from the La Brea Tar Pits in 1981. It was donated to the Elderwood National Park in 1998 when the Colombian mammoth became Washington State fossil. Named Bucktooth Charlie, it has since become the park's official mascot. Sure, those little plushies sell very well. Well, if anybody were here, at least. Seriously, Al, what you were saying in the car? Just listen to yourself. I don't know. What did I say? What, you shot a guy? And his body just disappeared? When was the last time you slept? What, are you high? Have you been drinking? That's nonsense. I didn't shoot a guy. I shot tons of guys. No! Look, Barry, I'm missing a week. And someone's got Alice. Do and everything's just- Do you understand what it sounds like when you say stuff like that? Don't get me wrong. It's a good story. Could be a bestseller. But when you start confusing fiction with reality, you're buying yourself a ticket to the funny farm. Right, wait here. Wait here? Okay. Uh, talk to Rusty. Well, we're gonna do that in just a moment because I smell coffee. Ha! Anything else around here? That I might steal. Are there bullets in this emergency cabinet? Hmm. This door is locked, so I guess we're gonna go out this way then. Easy there, boy. I'm almost done. The Toby? Hey, Rusty, right? You run cabins. Oh, Mr. Wake. I'd shake your hand, but mine are kinda full here. Actually, I'm sorry about this. Would you mind grabbing the registration form from the desk? It's just across from Bucktooth Charlie. Okay, sure. What happened? Crazy poachers. Max here got his foot caught in a trap. They're illegal to use here. Hell, you're not supposed to hunt within the park at all. But that doesn't stop some lowlifes. <sighs> well, at least Max is gonna be okay. He got lucky. Mm, okay, so that's not Max Toby. is still groggy from the shot I gave him, and I'd rather not leave him alone just yet. The form's on the desk across from the mammoth skeleton. Fine, fine. Seriously, Al, you can't just go and meet a kidnapper. Those situations always end up in disaster. You gotta talk to the cops. She's my wife, and it's my call. Can we talk about this later? No. This whole thing is... Listen, you hit your head. I mean, jeez, Al, come on. You gotta understand how crazy all this sounds. If you're trying to pull a joke on me, freak me out, it's working. Ha <laughs> ha, let's have a laugh on Barry. Well, you had me going there real funny, Al. You can quit it now. Hmm. Well, they did say that they'd observe me, so if I go talk to the cops, Alice is probably not gonna live. Oh, sign the form, yeah, sure. He doesn't even have a pen in his fingers. Whatever. I guess he just scratched his name with his fingernail. There we go. Um. Now that's a trap, isn't it? I think this is the form you wanted. And here are the keys. Okay, you're all set, Mr. Wake. Glad to have you staying here. Thanks. Can you tell me how to get to Lover's Peak? Oh, sure. It's at the end of the nature trail. Just follow the paths, you'll get to it eventually. It's an easy walk. Nice spot, too. Hmm. Sounds good. Eight. If you have any trouble finding it, just keep your eyes on the radio mast. It's right below that. Oh, and hey, if you take a walk in the woods, watch your steps so you don't end up like Max. I guess I'm a little worried. We got a bunch of campers out there we haven't heard from. It's not like these people are on a schedule, but with the traps, well, you know. I just don't want any trouble. Right, thanks. I'm probably already taken at this point. But this is prob a problem. I mean, it's so far to that peak. How do we get Whoa. over there? You're asking me to believe that you shot a dude who went poof into thin air, a guy who was bulletproof until you pointed a flashlight at him. 
Do you hear that from people who end up spending time in padded rooms? Strapped to their beds, wearing white shirts with too long tangled up sleeves, and eating a healthy diet of pills. I get your point, you don't have Al, to... Al, you make cruel jokes about people who believe that kind of stuff. You're the skeptic. You gave me an hour-long lecture on homeopathy last month. What was it? If there's no proof, it's pure bullshit. Period. Guess the laugh's on me, then. Al, come on! I mean, okay. Okay, maybe something weird happened to you, okay? Well, thanks for the heartfelt vote of confidence. All I'm saying is you gotta throw me a bone here, bestseller. What would you think if it was me? There's no way you should be going out at midnight with a gun. No one asked you to come here, Barry. Either work with me on this or go straight back to New York. Your choice. <laughs> he's, uh, he's conflicted. <laughs> I guess we're gonna take the car there. That's just crazy talk, Al. Al! Al? We should go to the sheriff or call the FBI? Damn it, Barry! They'll kill her! This is not a goddamn debate, Barry. <laughs> I'm going to Lover's Peak. He said to come alone. Okay, okay then. I understand. But you're my best friend and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. Tell me what to do to help, and I'll do it. You stay here, and if I'm not back by morning, call the cavalry. Just be careful with the natives, Al. These yokels are dangerous. Everybody hates a tourist, or it'll be deliverance all over again. Ooh. Bless you. Oh, this place is trying to kill me. I'll bet there's mold in here, spores, poison ivy, God knows what. This is so not worth a 15% commission. Well, if it's another bestseller, it is. You want to know where you can shove that flashlight? <laughs> Lock the door when I leave. Yeah, yeah, you go ahead and do what you have to do. I'll be fine. Alone, but fine. In a cabin straight from a horror movie. No, he's got a point. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Gotta do what we gotta do. At least he has a nice little chimney here. Alright, so of course we had to wait till midnight because that, that that is when we are supposed to meet the kidnappers. So the lights. Real funny, Al! Real oh. funny! Haha! <laughs> Thank Sorry, you! Sorry, dude. I'll just sit here in the dark till you come back. The lights are already until back I get on. Eaten by a grill. Zork? Zork reference, that's uh, that's interesting. Batteries? I had 20 batteries, why don't I have any... Whatever. I guess we can start collecting new ones. And I don't have any of my weapons anymore. Mm. Uh, is that the same one? I didn't realize we were back in the third grade here. Yeah, sorry. Just need to check everything, dude. Try stuff. I keep knocking over these plants. <laughs> that's, uh, that's too bad. Oh wow, we are really high up here. Hmm. All right. Well, now it's it's around midnight, so we are bound I'll to. Wait here, Al. I'll hold down the fort. I'll be with you in spirit every step of the way, Al. Locking the door now. That's fine. Don't need to come back in. I think. We, we had to wait till midnight, of course, which means that all of the campers around here are probably taken by the darkness. At least that's what I expect from this game. Because otherwise we wouldn't have any enemies. For some reason I do have my, my, my pistol, but none of my other weapons. Where did my shotgun go? Hmm. He probably dropped them off at the, uh, at the gas station. So he wouldn't take them with him or something to the police station. Another manuscript page? What do we have? Barry had never gotten along with Alice, but he knew Alan loved her with an almost frightening intensity. And now something had happened to Alice. And here was Al armed with a gun and saying things people got put in padded cells for. It was as if his friend had experienced a massive psychotic episode. 
and was now totally disconnected from reality. It scared the shit out of Barry. Understandable. Let's just hope that uh, Barry learns of the darkness before he dies. Can we take this car? So that he can actually help us and isn't simply killed off like some minor character. Barry had the keys to the car he rented. It wasn't a long walk to the visitor center, and it wouldn't be any use to me in the forest. What, don't they have roads in that forest? I, I mean... knew I should have gone to the cops. This wasn't the smartest thing I'd ever done, but I was still angry with Barry for trying to talk me out of it. These people had called me right in the sheriff's station. The cops wouldn't scare them, and they had Alice. I mean, sure, there aren't any paved roads in the forest, but most forests at least have some sort of uh, dirt roads for the forest workers and rangers and whatnot. Whatever. Guess we're gonna walk. Gives us more opportunity to have to fight dudes, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, this kind of dirt road I'm talking about. Another cabin right here, okay. Can we get in there maybe? What the? Something knocked over that dustbin. Maybe a bird or something? I did not see it when it happened. Somebody doesn't care whether their house is looted or not. Welcome back to the show, folks. As promised, our very own Dr. Nelson has just parked his rear end in the studio. Doc, what's your Deerfest plan like? My plan? You make it sound a lot more organized than I ever seek to manage. <laughs> oh. Oh. And no plan. Really, just taking the atmosphere. I'm getting a little too rickety to do much more than that, you know. Oh, tell me about it. No sack race for us older gentlemen, huh? <laughs> yes, exactly that. But I'm gonna check out the parade, of course. And I'll be one of the pie contest judges, too. <laughs> uh, well, that takes a different kind of constitution. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's my kind of exercise. Now, Doc, seriously, you're in pretty good shape, though. You're the outdoors type. I, I know for a fact you're an avid fisherman. That's right. Matter of fact, just caught a heck of a largemouth bass early this morning. But you're not taking part in the fishing contest? No, no, not this year. Um, see, Pat, I'm just not that competitive anymore. Now I just like to take my time and enjoy the peace of it. It's no fun if I need to worry about what I'm catching, you know? Well, considering your track record, the participants are probably pretty happy you feel that way. <laughs> well, Pat, that's kind of you to say. It was a pretty boring interview. Let's leave on the lights in case we need to rush back here or something. By the way, I uh, I think that Pat Main may be another reference to Stephen King. Um, I may be wrong about this, but considering that most of the stories that Stephen King writes seem to be taking place in Maine, I'm guessing it's a small reference to him. What? Earthquake or something? What's going on? What's that rumbling? Obviously wouldn't know. Another cabin? Oh, well, more stuff to explore, I guess. And it's also another staple of Stephen King's to have one of the main characters be a writer, you know. So that's kind of what we're having here. This game is pretty full of uh, Stephen King references, even if I may not get all of them. Oh, I have to kick this one down, huh? Okay then. Hey, maybe there's another Night Springs episode on. Let's see. Yes, there is. Cool. Crime and punishment. The cancer and cure of civilization. But some crimes are impossible to punish. 
especially in night springs. Mm. Tonight's episode, The Man in the Mirror. Let's see. He's inside, Agent. He's a weird one. So, you're confessing to killing that guy, huh? Why? And it coming? Yeah, but why would you do that? I mean, you're a nice guy. Normal. Took a kid to a soccer game. So how come at the game, you pick a guy and, quoting from the arresting officer's report here, assault the victim's head area repeatedly with the weapon of choice being a pair of bare fists? Wow. That sentence really flows, huh? Maybe you're not the literary type. Okay, so you mess him up. But why? Who was that guy? We couldn't ID him. Why would a guy like you do him like that? I didn't like his face? Well, you must have hated it, because you really went to town there. I mean, there's no way to tell what he looked like. No ID on him either. That must be difficult. But then we ran the fingerprints. Got a match. Your prints. Identical. Huh, how about that? Your son said you were wearing a white shirt when you took him to the game. Wait, the white shirt is on the dead guy. It's plenty red now. You won't get away with this. Do you really think that's in any way relevant to me? I had plenty of time to talk to my boy before the cops arrived, you know? He won't stop screaming, am I right? You think he's ever gonna be okay? I left my mark. Believe me. You! You bastard! What? You gonna shoot me? What's the point? I'm going to prison. You got me. I... I don't understand any of this. And you never will. Don't worry. Maybe you'll see me again, Agent. Maybe in the mirror. guy was the evil version from the mirror universe. Night springs. Ooh. Okay, well we're gonna be on the lookout for more of those little episodes. More stupid birds. That's how Roman's doing. Just kinda wondering here. Phone, which does not work, okay. Why am I going downhill? I thought I was supposed to go uphill. Manuscript page, you can see that from afar. Get it. Rose knew that Rusty was in love with her, and she liked him too. She liked him a lot. He taught her to dance, and life had certainly taught her the value of a man who was gentle. He treated her well, made her smile, made her feel good. But Rusty wasn't the prince of her dreams, and that tended to underline the unbearable truth. She was no closer to that Hollywood magic than he was. Oh boy. Ah, that Rose and her obsessions. Another one, okay. The air in the visitor center was heavy with an awful smell, as if some rotten, drowned thing had crawled up from its grave. Rusty kept coughing blood. My eyes were drawn to the twisted shape of his broken leg. The attack had been vicious. Max whined in his cage. Rusty's eyes were wild with fear and terror. He gasped. Mr. Wake, it happened just the way it was on that page. Oh boy. So Rusty is bound to die. I wonder if we can, like, change the future as is prophesized in those pages, or if it's bound to happen in this game. The, the Damn vision it. left me weak. This was no head injury. No! No! What the hell? And the Anybody? Help me. I'm trying, dude. Help. Help me. I can't.
can't run any faster right now. Can you hear me? Anyone? Please help! Hello? I'm back here. I'm back here. Hey, please. Mr. Wake? <laughs> oh, hell. It happened. Just the way it was on that page. I found. Game true. It knew. So dark. It'll come back for me. You must... The lights. In the office. I, I have the key. Okay, Rusty. Hang on. I'll be right back. Whatever did this couldn't be far. Rusty had found a page from the manuscript. It would help me understand what had happened. First we gotta turn on the lights. Where is that? Right. Follow the... Uh Waypoint indicator, I guess. So we have to leave this room? I don't want to leave this area. If I leave this area, then Rusty will probably die. And Max was in the pen, so he Shh, certainly didn't do anything. Good boy. Um. Hey, it would be really good if I could get at these emergency supplies right now and maybe help Rusty, but no. Guess that would make too much sense. Where's that page he was talking about? Oh god, his, his leg is really mangled. Oh, the only way to make sure that yeah. Rusty was safe was to get the power running and the lights back on. Right. So this is the office he was talking about. Okay. There's a manuscript page. That must be the one he was talking about. Let's quickly read that. At the last instant, I changed direction and threw myself down. The axe splintered the trunk of a tree. I stumbled into the pool of bright light. My lungs burned. I was too exhausted to move. I tensed as I waited for the killing blow, but it never came. I raised my head. Nothing moved in the darkness beyond. For the moment, bathed in the cold light, I was safe. All right. Where's the light switch? More supplies, maybe back here. Yeah. No. It was too late. Someone had destroyed the circuit breaker. Can I fix there was it? no way to get the lights back on. Guess not. And of course, why not? Rusty. Rusty. There's no way I'm in time. The ground was covered with oily patches oh. that looked like liquid darkness. Need hunting licenses. Uh, who the? Crying out loud! Wait, Rusty is Something gone. Something had torn a mammoth-sized hole in the wall. Mammoth-sized. It's not a skeleton, it's still here. I'm crying out loud, this is pretty, pretty awful. The dog is gone too. Please don't feed the animals. Uh, okay. Let's Fishing quickly. This is only permitted for those prisoners who purchase a park fishing license. They're like repeating their most common phrases without any thought or, or intelligence behind it. It's quite disturbing. Is there any coffee around here? I need coffee. Come on, before I continue I want to check. And then I want to look... Yeah, there's coffee. I knew there would be coffee somewhere around here. <sighs> coffee. Okay. Now I want to check out that liquid darkness again because that is weird. Can I burn it away maybe? Yeah. 
be gone, Spawn of Darkness. It makes sense this time around. I don't know if that's necessary at all. But, uh, Ooh, there's another one. And also another manuscript page from the looks of it, so I'm gonna pick that up. The visitor center was sturdy, but the impact turned the front of the building into splinters. Rusty was thrown across the lobby like a rag doll and hit the far wall hard. It didn't hurt until he tried to move and saw his leg bend the wrong way, felt the broken ribs stabbing him on the inside. Rusty howled in pain and fear, suddenly afraid to die alone. All right, I guess that's the page he was talking about. Let's follow that mammoth or whatever it was. So Rusty and Max are both gone. I don't know whether either of them are alive. Probably Rusty not. Maybe Max is still alive, but. Uh, uh. At all times. Is that Rusty? Rusty? Rusty, no! Oh yeah, it is there's Rusty. Two bears and wolves never approach any other closer than 25 yards. He's like Stucky, super fast. Out loud. Damn, you're fast. Crying out loud, stand still, dude. Can't hit you. There we go. Gotta take it down now, Rusty. Sorry, dude. Oh no, there's more of them. Alright. Man, these these mini bosses are super fast. They aren't that dangerous, at least not yet, but uh, difficult to hit. So I guess uh, at least Rusty is no longer taken, that's, that's pretty much the best I can say. Because now he's dead, which is not good either. What's happening over there? I guess we're gonna find out. More, more goo on the floor. One of the kidnappers have anything to do with the darkness. What's happening now? What? What the hell was that? I saw it from the window. I saw it. I saw something. Forget about it, Barry. It's just me going crazy. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. You're not crazy. I wish you were crazy, but you're not crazy. Ow, be careful. Stay in the cabin. Don't open the door for anyone. I mean it. At least... At least Barry believes me now. Is this then... I guess this is where I have to go? Probably. Some more emergency supplies, which would not have helped Rusty in the least, because... Uh, <laughs> there are no bandages and nothing inside. This is weird, folks. I mean, I, I, I get it, but still it's weird. In that last instant of consciousness, Rusty thought about Rose. He was older than she was. Rose was barely out of her teens. But she made him feel young, 
and forget what a train wreck his long dead marriage had been. He still wore the ring. He'd been waiting for her to tell him to take it off. Now she never would. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really sad. I like that even these minor characters get some, well, characterization. That's not that common in games. Or stories, for that matter. Sure, it's short, but it's effective, I think. What's this then? Stay on the hiking trail, okay. I won't, because I will be looking for coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. Can't go here. And we're past half an hour, so I think we're gonna. Lover's Peak was at the far here. end of the nature trail. Right. Let's quickly check out this little bonus area over here. I oh, know, we'll do that in the next part, so see you then, folks. Bye.